Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Montreal-based jazz drummer, composer, and producer Will Renier. We get into his debut album, which is the new 2024 CD called Traces. It's a genre-defying instrumental music blend of a variety of styles to create a truly unique musical universe. Drawing inspiration from the rich heritage of jazz, folk, and progressive rock, the nine pieces on this album album signal the arrival of a new voice in Canadian jazz. His early influences came from his dad and Rush and many others. We cover his life and music, the future, and so much more. Enjoy. I'm excellent. Hey, thank you for taking a minute out today. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Yeah, I just, uh, I've been having some Zoom issues today, so I wanted to make sure that, um, yeah, that I, you know, I had all of my, uh, all my ducks roasted. So thank you for taking a minute out today. I appreciate it. Ah, my pleasure. So, so before we get into your new album, I want to know, we went through quite a thing with COVID um, over the last yeah. four years, and we're coming up on the anniversary. As an artist, as a musician, how did you survive that time period? How did you get through it? Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, I mean, the COVID was both a, a blessing and a curse because... Uh, I I wasn't gigging and playing shows, but then I had a lot of time to uh, practice my instrument, to work on composition, and I actually produced uh, two EPs uh, also for uh, emerging artists uh, here in Montreal. So it it have it I had a lot of great opportunities with uh with covid as well but uh i was really missing playing live to uh to a live uh, audience so uh yeah it was quite hard but i've my i've uh i have managed to uh to play a couple of shows during covid uh there they were live streaming uh, but uh it's not really the same thing as playing in front of live people you know if I can, yeah Absolutely. So let's talk about your latest album, Traces. Talk to me about how you put this album together and how it feels. Oh, yeah. So this this album uh, has been written during my uh, passage at uh, Université de Montréal, which is the university. I did the, the jazz program there. Uh, so I think half of the mater material was written down during my my master's degree. And the other half was written uh, the summer after I, f I finished. And uh, I, uh, I wanted to approach a jazz composition like uh, a singer-songwriter. So starting with the melody and having a progressive rock and jazz background, I, I'm often drawn to quite complicated music. But what I realize is that the music I, I, I dig is always uh, as always strong melodic hooks to ba to balance the complexity of the music. So that's why I've started to um, compose that music with a singer songwriter approach. So starting with a melody and then playing uh, on, on my piano or my acoustic guitar. Uh, so that. That's what the, the 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 start of the creative process. But after that, we we've uh, I, I I bring the music to the to the band and jam a couple of ideas, and it was a lot of back and forth between those jam sessions with the band and me alone at home rearranging that music. So that whole process process took almost two years to get the nine final pieces of the album before uh, entering the studio to, to record the, the final album. Yeah. So what are you ultimately hoping the listener gets from this album? Uh, I mean, you know, a lot of jazz albums are presented uh not ja not only jazz albums but a few of them are a few of them are just a compilation of recorded track and they're not always uh a co cohesive 
whole, you know. And I wanted to to create something that felt almost like a movie or almost like a cinema for for the ears. So uh, I wanted to to be cinematic and have a uh, an immersive experience for the listener and to have like a, a narrative a narrative for the whole record so uh uh i think uh i'm really proud of what uh what i achieved with this album because it's really a, a musical journey in that in that sense and if every piece of the every track is a story in itself yeah so speaking of journey how did this jazz journey begin for you tell me where you were born and raised and how did the the seeds of jazz and music become who you are today? Well, jazz uh, has entered my life quite uh, later on. Uh, my father was a drummer. He was a really big uh, Rush and uh, Neil Peart fan. So I was introduced to drums and progressive rock uh, early on. And... Uh, both my parents uh, had a great taste. My my mother lis- listened to a lot of uh, new wave and uh, 80s pop bands like uh, Tears for Fears, uh, Simple Minds, those kind of, of bands. So the mixture of that genre and what my, the, the, the weird uh, progressive bands that my father listened to uh, was a good plan for me. It, it opened it opened up my uh my uh my taste for uh, eclectic music and uh so i started off by j- jamming to my parents record and uh, uh jazz was only introduced to me uh when i started studying jazz in college uh, in, in quebec we have uh, uh, what we call Cégep. It's a college before universities. It's, it's uh, after high school, but before university. And that's when I really started to, uh, to get into, interested in uh, jazz and start uh, playing it. Yeah. So what was the first live show that you saw that blew you away? Oh, the, well, the first live show was uh, obviously Rush with my father. Uh, I, I saw him a couple of times, but one of my first show that really it blew my mind was actually I, I was 15 years old and I was doing um, the the. The jazz festival here in Montreal has uh, uh, something we call the blues camp, and so they they invite high school students to just uh, pass a week and uh, with blues musician and play at the end of the week at the jazz festival. And during that week, they um, we uh, we add tickets for for shows uh, during the festival and. Uh, we happened to go see Jeff Beck, uh, and it it was just it, it blew my mind. It was surreal how good the show was, and at that time I I I didn't really knew who Jeff Beck was, and you know behind the drums was one of my hero, uh, Vinnie Caluta. And uh, well, he, that show is really in, is still in my uh, my DNA. It's it was so incredible to see that live. Yeah, incredible musicians, beautiful music. So that that maybe is the the one show that uh, made a mark on me. So talk to me a little bit about. Being a professional musician, there's all these aspects that go into it, from recording music to playing live, just all of these things that go into it. But what do you like the best about being a professional musician? Uh, well, obviously, my favorite thing is playing music. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's all kind of tasks 
that need to be done as a professional professional musician and some of these tasks are not always fun <laughs> especially those that require a computer <laughs> so um i i've been hired uh, mostly as a session drummer like a hired gun on many projects uh, here in quebec so i've been working as a professional drummer for almost 12 years now but uh, starting my own uh, project with my own music uh, recently has just opened a new door for me and uh, i really think i have to uh, prioritize that uh, aspect because when i was um doing all kind of ses session gigs for many artists in all kind of genre uh i love to do it but there's always this feeling this inner urge to to create something myself and to leave a kind of a musical legacy behind you know and, and releasing this album uh for me it was quite a revelation how i i just love I, i really loved doing it and releasing it and now we're just starting to uh preparing the the live show for the 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 release show and um it's it's so much fun for me to to play my own music yeah so at the end of the day why do you love jazz That's a great question. Uh I love jazz just because of the uncertainty and uh, the spontaneous improvisation. Everything could happen, everything is uh you don't really have a, a safety net in jazz. <laughs> so you got to take chances and, and that's really scary but at the same time it's quite uh, thrilling yeah so you would mention live shows what's coming up for you is the kind of the warm months approach and where's the best place for people to pick up traces kind of the good business uh well uh, at the moment we're only doing one show in one lounge uh, show in Montreal so it's on March 23rd um at La Sala Rosa with which is a, a nice a really nice uh, venue in Montreal and uh people can order uh the digital vers version or uh physical version there's a really nice uh, vinyl and CD available through Bandcamp uh on my Bandcamp page So uh yeah people can get uh, a, a copy on, on that and uh, it's available uh, on uh, on all streaming uh, platform as well. Final question if you could get into a time machine and go back in time and see any jazz show live where are you going to go? Oh. Oof. That's a tough one. <laughs> Oh, it it may be it may sound cliche but uh I would love to be in the studio during the recording of Kind of Blue. Uh just to be in the same room that uh it has been recorded that that would uh, make me go crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's funny I'm actually reading a book now. Um I'm reviewing it for the interview that I'm going to do and it's called Three Shades of Blue. and it takes a deep dive into each of the musicians that were a part of that session and the whole session. So, uh James Kaplan wrote it, Three Shades of Blues. So, yeah, I I think I would have to join you for that. That would be wonderful to see how that uh nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Well, man, this has been great. Thank you so much for talking about the album, your life and music opening up. I really appreciate it. Best of luck with everything. Thanks so much, Joe. It's a, it's really a pleasure and uh, thanks for the the great interview. 
I really appreciate it. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview. We give you a bit of insight into the finest players and minds in Montreal, Kansas City, and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to Will for his time, energy, and story. If you want to hear more Neon Jazz interviews, you can find us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Subscribe to us at YouTube, and for everything Neon Jazz, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.